What is up you guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I really want to talk about kids' eczema and babies' eczema and how you can overcome children's eczema completely naturally from the inside out. Now many of you parents might already have eczema in the family and for those of you who do, you might already be implementing the strategy as so far with your kids and for those of you who don't have eczema in your family, you might be finding this quite a daunting prospect in terms of having to treat your child's eczema and what is the best way to overcome their condition. And in this video today, I'm gonna to give you some great tips as to what you can do for your kids' eczema so that you can avoid having to use steroids in the future. Also, you guys, don't forget to leave me your comments down below as I'd really love to hear your feedback about your child's eczema and to know how you've managed it, how you're getting along, and if any of these tips in this video are of use to you today. Also, you guys, don't forget to leave me your comments down below as I'd really love to hear your feedback about your child's eczema and to know how you've managed it, how you're getting along, and if any of these tips in this video are of use to you today. And at the same time, you guys, don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up for this video if you find it of value. Support my channel and leave a comment down below as I'd love to hear from your comments and feedback about your child's eczema and how her healing or his healing process and treatment is coming along. And at the same time, you guys, don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up for this video if you find it of value. Support my channel and leave a comment down below as I'd love to hear from your comments and feedback about your child's eczema and how her healing or his healing process and treatment is coming along. My name's Layla and this channel is dedicated to all of those of you who are struggling with eczema, topical steroid withdrawal and any other skin inflammatory condition. This is the channel to be watching. Stick around to the end of this video because at the end of this video I'm really going to share with you one of my most favourite tips that I used over the years with my daughter so that she could actually sleep through the night so that her skin was able to heal and close up and do well. So stick around to the end of this video and I will share that little secret with you. And at the same time, you guys, don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up for this video if you find it of value. Support my channel and leave a comment down below as I'd love to hear from your comments and feedback about your child's eczema and how her healing or his healing process and treatment is coming along. So as a child, I really struggled with my eczema. I had it in the real typical places, behind my knees, behind my elbows, everywhere around my face, particularly around my mouth area. Here I have a lot of scar tissue on my upper lip because that was kind of the area where I would rub my face an awful lot and that's where I basically ended up having a lot of open crack wounds for many years. My basic treatment that I had for my eczema growing up was um, having a hydrocortisone steroid which I was only allowed to have for two weeks at a time and otherwise my skin was pretty much in a bad way. My mother was very, very conscious, conscientious about how much steroid cream I was allowed to have and in the meantime I was allowed to support my skin with very various different creams and lotions and the oil laden baths. And with this oil laden bars, it was just like a little cap full that you would put into the bath water. And it was a very stereotypical type of treatment, type of oil that a lot of eczema sufferers at the time used to use. I found this quite an archaic type of treatment because it wasn't really tackling the underlying problem, the root cause, it was simply tackling what was on the surface of the skin. And we all know today that eczema really does come from the inside, that's inflammation in our body that's coming out through our skin. So in order to tackle that eczema, we really need to discover the root cause of that inflammation. Fast forwarding to the modern day, in 2014 I had my daughter and she unfortunately did suffer with a lot of eczema when I was beginning to wean her off milk. So I actually breastfed her for a complete year and I began to wean her at about six months as most parents do. And it was during the course of this weaning that we discovered that her eczema was starting to flare quite severely because we were introducing foods perhaps maybe at the wrong time or the wrong types of foods. But at the time, we didn't really know an awful lot about what we were doing. So we did go ahead and see Julia Edgeley, homeopath and holistic practitioner, who gave us really good guidelines as to how we could overcome her eczema. And it wasn't just eczema, but it was dermatitis as well. She had a lot of heavy crust encrusted cradle crap. Oh my dear, I meant to say cradle cap on her scalp which we had to really manage. And most often she had, we covered her arms and her hands with socks so that she wouldn't rub her thumbs and her hands 
on the straps of her pram. At 18 months, my daughter Isabel, I took her to an analogist who basically gave her the IgE test whereby she was pricked numerous times on the arms and then added the actual allergen to that prick to see how well she reacted. And this stayed on her skin almost like as a plaster for three days. And I have to say pretty much every allergen that was put on her arm came up on, as a bump, a little red bump. So we knew straight away that she had a lot of allergens to deal with and a lot of them were environmental. And when I say environmental, I'm talking things like pollen, tree pollen, grass, that sort of thing, these exterior allergens that were really the most bothersome to her, as well as a lot of pet dander, horse, that sort of thing. All of those were really big allergens that came up on her test. At this time, I was really going down the mainstream medical practitioner route with these allergy tests. So we weren't really given very much guidance as to do anything in terms of diet. We were just told to basically avoid pollens and grass, which, you know, is kind of a little bit unreasonable or a little bit difficult because you want to be outside, you want your child to be outside, you want to be breathing the fresh air, and all those allergens and pollens are outside at the same time. So in this video today, I'm going to give you five tips that you can actually apply to your own child and trying to target the root cause. Now, first and foremost, this is my disclaimer to say that I am not a medical practitioner, I'm not a doctor. Please do go ahead and do your own research and do a treatment plan according to what you feel is best for your child or baby. And these are just little, little tips and tricks that I did with my child and it has really helped overcome her eczema. It's diet, yes, we had to amend her diet. Now, obviously, if you guys have been watching my channel over the last few weeks and months, then you will know that I am a histamine intolerant eczema type, and there are different types of eczema that can be your trigger, that can be your root cause. And as I was a histamine intolerant person, it pretty much led to Isabel, my daughter, being histamine intolerant on a very mild scale. I have to say that when it came to really knuckling down to the diet, gluten, dairy, sugar, those were the main triggers for us. And then we had the corn and the soy at the side and nuts as well. Um, and thereafter, it was just things like the nightshades and the high histamine foods. So tip number two was that we had to change out a lot of Isabel's hygiene products. And this came down to her bubble baths that she would have, to her lotions and potions, and then also things that we would wash clothes with, environmental factors such as other people wearing perfume, that sort of thing. But the first and foremost thing that we did was to avoid those SLSs, which is that sodium lauryl sulfate. And if you watch my channel before, you'll know that I always recommend to use products that don't contain sodium lauryl sulfates, the SLSs, and to go for more organic, more natural products, such as things like the Bauman's range, such as things like the Dr. Brunner's range, such as just using apple cider vinegar in the bath alone can really help soften the water so it's not stripping the hydration from the skin all the time. We over bath and shower far, far too much. The water is particularly hard where we live here in the south of France, and the best way to check your water to see if it's hard or not is just to see how much scale builds up in your kettle and if you find that over a course of two to three days you've got that lime scale at the bottom of your kettle or on the surrounds of the sides then you know that you've got hard water in your area the best way to overcome this is to use apple cider vinegar in the bath as i've always previously mentioned in my other videos this is a real natural water softener and by not having that hard water stripping all the oils away from our skin having to use lots Lots more lotions and creams by using the apple cider vinegar it softens the water which allows to keep that locked in moisture locked in so that we don't have to apply tons and tons of moisturizer when we get out of the bath similarly in terms of actually taking baths I really do recommend just as we do with the grown-ups just to do with the kids is to bath them maybe three to four times a week rather than every single night again it's just to minimize that dryness minimize those oils those natural oils being stripped away from our own skin. In terms of hair care products, again, I avoid the SLSs. I know there's a lot of marketed brands out there specific to child's eczema, but really just look at that ingredients list because that is where you're going to get the most value out of that product. I know that they have like a whole ton of different products out there to choose from and we get all very excited by 
the colorful labels and the marketing slogans and that sort of thing, but really look at your ingredients list. Make sure that there's no SLSs in it, otherwise it's really not worth considering. Washing powders and washing liquids also fall under this category. Bear in mind what you're using to wash your children's clothes because that might be causing a lot of, of irritation on their skin directly. So it's another contact dermatitis type symptom. I really like the True Earth brand because it's really, really eco-friendly. There's not big bulky bottles to carry and that sort of thing. And they come in these little strips and they say to use one strip per low, but for me and my family, I have to say I need two and sometimes three of these strips to put in the washing machine. But I love the fact that these can be ordered in the post and they just come directly to your door. All of the packaging can be recycled and it's just light on the load, you know? So I really like them. So leading on to number three from our hygiene products very nicely is actually looking at a lot of your household products that you use to clean. Your bath, your children's bedrooms, the floors, that sort of thing. All of these products can also be part of their contact dermatitis or contact eczema, which can actually aggravate things all the more. So bear in mind to try and stick towards as many natural products as you can possible in order to clean your house, such as vinegar and water, lemon juice, that sort of thing. Um, I really do believe in that. You can also add a few of your own essential oils to different, to different water products with vinegar just to help clean and then also to actually give that scent in your house which is a lot more therapeutic perhaps to your living space. I like to put a lot of lavender oil in our stuff so that everyone can have that nice feeling of calm in the household. So tip number four is bearing in mind that your gut flora is very much influenced by perhaps medication or vaccines. And we found this very true when Isabel was vaccinated as a baby. Here in France, you have a series of vaccines in your first year. And I definitely found a relationship through my journaling that whenever she had had a series of vaccines, she would start to have very flared eczema, very flared skin, very irritated and inflamed. And I did see a very strong correlation between the medication she was having and the vaccines and having this skin inflammation. So if possible, I would suggest trying to ask your doctor and talk to your doctor about staggering vaccines for babies especially and toddlers and seeing if instead of grouping them together and having series of vaccines or perhaps three or four in one day, which is what we do here in France, to see if you can try and stagger them throughout a series of a few weeks or something. Tip number five is to consider staph, which is that bacteria that lies within your eczema. And rather than always returning to antibiotics to clear up your staphylococcus, then to rather consider perhaps some colloidal silver on the skin instead, and to only really take antibiotics when absolutely necessary, and not to take course after course. Antibiotics can really strip that gut flora, strip all that microbiome in our guts, which are really, really important. It takes away the bad bacteria, which is what it's trying to kill, but it also at the same time takes away the good bacteria. So I wanted to share that little secret with you guys about my daughter's eczema and how I managed to enable her to sleep through the night so that she wasn't up itchy and scratchy. And no, I wasn't drugging her, but I did use a special cream and that is the E45 Itch Relief Cream. This was a real godsend to us because it has almost like a numbing cream, a numbing agent in the cream. And I would just put this on her affected areas before she would go to bed and she would literally get the first few hours of sleep completely uninterrupted and in fact perhaps all through the night I often found with my daughter previously she would be up in the early hours of the night with her scratching and itching whereby I would wake up and obviously have to come along and and soothe her but with this cream, um, it does last for about two hours at a time and it just gave her that really good early hours of the evening sleep that she needed so that she could get the rest of a good night's sleep thereafter. That's it from me, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you did and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye for now.